Hi. Today we're going to talk about the nervous system. Um, we're in section 14.1 and here it talks a little bit about the nervous system, but I think that's kind of a little incomplete definition. So I'm going to go right to the anatomy of the nervous system. And here's the first two things you really should get in your mind and remember that when we talk about the central nervous system, we're talking about the brain and the spinal cord. And we're talking about the peripheral nervous system. We're talking about the nerves. I've had students over the years say, oh, the central nervous system is the brain and the spinal cord. And the peripheral nervous system is everything else. But what's everything else? It's all the nerves. So here's the brain, spinal cord, central nervous system. But then we have all these nerves branching off that are essential for the normal function of the, of the nervous system. So all these nerves um, make up the PNS, the the peripheral nervous system. So we have the CNS and the PNS. And it talks, has a diagram here, and it goes into a little bit more detail than I'm going to have time to do. But um, we have the central nervous system, and then that's going to receive and send information to the nerves and different parts of the body, and then back. So um, major functions of the nervous system are listed here. It receives sensory input. So um, there's lots of receptors. There's um, touch receptors, pain receptors, temperature receptors, light receptors, sound receptors, and they're going to um, all considered to be sensory receptors that are going to detect the, the stimuli in the environment. And they're going to use the nerves to transfer these sensations from the PNS to the CNS. So they're giving you an example of smell here when you're smelling baking cookies. The central nervous system is going to process that information. So um, the, the nerves are going to eventually connect into the central nervous system, into the brain and spinal cord. And um, you really can't smell or feel or um, process information until that information gets to the brain. And so um, in the central nervous system, there's a lot of what we call integration of information, processing and integration that's going on. And then um, the third major function of the nervous system is the, the uh, responses that we create. And a lot of these responses are created um, as movements or secretions from glands. So uh, once uh, you, I don't know, you're touching something hot, it gets to your brain, your brain says, hmm, that's hot. Better move my hand. Um, and so any kind of movements that you're going to make are motor responses. So information that goes from the CNS to the PNS, we would consider motor. So sensory are impulses that go from the PNS to the CNS. Motor are impulses that are going from the CNS to the PNS, from the brain to the nerves. And integration happens within the central nervous system. When we look at nervous tissue, there's two main kinds of cells that you're going to find, and they're neurons and neuroglia. And probably most people, when they're thinking of the nervous system, you think about neurons as being the most important cells. And um, they actually are the only cells that can uh, that conduct impulses from one part of the body to another. And so it's a, they're really important cells for the communication of information from one part of the body to another. Neuroglia, though, far outnumber neurons. And neurons, uh, neuroglia are important cells of the, of the nervous system, although they do not conduct impulses like neurons do, but they support the neurons and they help the neurons function normally. Um, this section gives you some examples of, of neuroglia, and there's all sorts of interesting things to talk about here, but the only ones we really have time to talk about very much are Schwann cells, so those will come up again pretty soon. When we look at the anatomy of a neuron, um, you can see here that here's a, a neuron that's taking sensory information and transferring it to another neuron, and that's transferring information to a motor neuron. So um, we, the, we can group neurons into three major functional groups. One is sensory neuron, where it's going to take signals from sensory receptors. So again, these receptors might be detecting touch or light or, in the example above, smell, anything like that. 
interneurons are going to, and so these are going to be a part of the peripheral nervous system. Interneurons are going to be found in the central nervous system, and these are going to connect to other neurons. So um, where should this sensory information go in the brain? And the interneurons are going to connect to other interneurons and determine where that information will go um, in the central nervous system. And then if there's a response that needs to be made, that impulse is going to be sent to a motor neuron. So the motor neuron is going to carry impulses from the central nervous system and out to the peripheral nervous system. So this might be the neuron that um, tells you to lift your hand or, um, oh, here I have a drink. I'm kind of thirsty. And I had a lot of motor neurons. I had to work there to lift that can. And um, So here would I, sensory neurons that detected thirst and integrated my mind, hmm, maybe I better go get some, uh, get a drink. And my motor neurons coordinated all the muscles and the movements necessary to, for that to happen. Now notice that with all these neurons, that the impulse is going from one, one direction. Um, they're not going back and forth. Sensory neurons are gonna carry impulses from the PNS, the peripheral nervous system, to the CNS. Interneurons are going to carry impulses within the central nervous system, and motor neurons are going to carry impulses from the central nervous system to the peripheral nervous system, so from CNS to PNS. Uh, if I look at a single neuron, so let's look at this motor neuron right here. Some of the important parts are listed right here, and they said um, there's a cell body, and that's kind of looks like a normal cell. That's where the organelles and the nucleus are. Um, the dendrites are branching off of that cell body. Now you'll notice this sensory neuron looks a little bit different, but let's use the motor neuron for an example. <clears throat> so these dendrites are, um, are branching off that cell body. And actually these sensory receptors right here are just modifications of dendrites. So information is received from the, at the dendrites and from the cell body. Information goes into the neuron right there. Then we have this long appendage that comes out of the neuron and that's the axon. And when I say long, um, neurons are some of the longest cells in the entire body. Um, we have neurons that have their cell bodies at the base of our spine and their axons ending in axon terminals go all the way down to our foot. So one single cell can go from your lower back all the way down to your foot. Um, the axon is actually where the impulse is going to be conducted. So an electrical current is going to be carried down that axon and um, transferred to another part of the body. Here they said um, the axon can be long. They're called nerve fibers. And when I put a when you put a bunch of these nerve fibers together, these axons together, you actually have a nerve. So a nerve is um, made of axons of many neurons. Now there's one more thing in that picture that I didn't mention, and this was what we call the myelin sheath. And the myelin sheath are made is made by um, neuroglia that are called Schwann cells. And so these cells right here are Schwann cells and together we call this whole thing the myelin sheath. And so the myelin sheath covers the axon of some neurons. And what it basically does is it helps speed up the nervous impulse. And um, without going into too much detail, the way it does it is that um, electrical impulse gets started at the top of the axon, and then it actually can kind of jump from one space between the Schwann cells to the next, and it speeds up the nervous impulse. Um, that might be relevant to you when thinking about a baby, that um, there's milestones that babies go through. And, you know, we all, we all know how babies, you know, are very kind of clumsy. They go to reach for things and they can't grab them very easily, but gradually they get more coordination and um, they start coordinating their muscles that they can sit up or raise their head or stand or, you know, and eventually go through all the stages. But what's happening is when babies are born, they have very few Schwann cells and therefore their neurons conduct impulses relatively slowly. And so they can't coordinate 
easy, you know, fine motor functions. And they can't do it very quickly. So as the myelin sheaths are um, forming on the neurons of a newborn baby, they gain more coordination, their nervous system gets more coordinated with their muscular system, and they get um, movements that are more characteristic of an older child. So uh, that myelin sheath is absolutely critical for normal functioning of cells, um, normal functioning of the body. Here's a, a diagram, or it's actually a um, an electron microscope picture of some axons with myelin sheaths around it. So that's what they're showing you there with the Schwann cells around it forming a myelin sheath. And it's actually that the cells wrapping around there, there's a lot of lipid there. So the myelin sheath we would say is a lipid layer. Um, the other reason why the myelin sheath is so important is there's this disease that a lot of us have heard of and it's called multiple sclerosis. And um, in multiple sclerosis, we don't really know why people get this. There's been a lot of research into it, and it hasn't been cleared up. But when somebody gets multiple sclerosis, that myelin sheath on some of their neurons starts to deteriorate. It goes away. So here we have, you know, this starts to deteriorate, and you get areas where there's deterioration of myelin or sclera that you can see by like an MRI or something. And what happens is the person loses coordination of their, um, of their nervous system and their muscular system. So people with multiple sclerosis can end up um, losing vision, losing function, um, muscular function in different parts of their bodies. And um, it's due to this deterioration of those Schwann cells that make up the myelin sheath. There's a lot of details about how neurons conduct impulses, and if you took a more advanced class, you could go into a lot of this. But um, just to keep the big picture in this course, um, we're not going to go into all the details. But I did want to, you to, to be familiar with um, these, this terminology called, we say, resting potential and action potential. And um, a, a neuron has a charge. A, Positive and positive ions are distributed different differently across the membrane, and so there actually is when we say a neuron conducts an impulse down the axon, it's actually an electrical charge going down, and it's created that electricity is created by a balance of ions, particularly sodium and potassium. And all this stuff is good and interesting, but it's just um, beyond the scope of what we can do. So when you hear this word called action potential, um, action potential just means a nervous impulse. Okay, so a resting potential is the ability of a neuron, um, a neuron when it has the ability to conduct an impulse, but it's not doing it. An action potential is when those that electrical current is actually going down the neuron. And there's some really cool videos here, but they just happen to be a little bit above the level that we're, we're doing. So what's happening is we've got this neuron. Um, here we've got our one neuron sending an impulse to the next. And um, the we've got this electricity going down this neuron. Now this little piece right here is enlarged in this diagram. And here's the axon terminal, the end of one axon right here. And here's the cell body of the next neuron. And it turns out that um, the axon terminal is touching that cell body, but the electricity that's running down this axon of this neuron is not able to jump from one neuron through this tiny little space into the next. Okay, so this section here where one neuron meets another, we call a synapse. Where's that word? Here we go. One, the word for where one neuron meets another is called a synapse. The electricity is in one neuron is not able to jump over this space called the synaptic cleft. So what happens is this electrical energy in this action potential is converted into chemical energy. Now, I think most people have heard of neurotransmitters, and these are chemicals that are produced by a neuron 
to stimulate or to um, to stimulate another neuron. And um, that's what they're showing you here in more detail that I'm going to talk about. But these are little vesicles releasing. So the electricity in this neuron stimulates the release of a neurotransmitter. It's going to stimulate the next neuron and um, and that's going to start a chemical uh, that's going to start the electrical current in the second neuron. So here we have right here we have the synapse where two neurons are meeting. The electricity is going down one neuron. It reaches the synaptic cleft, the space between the two neurons, converts this electrical energy into chemical energy called a neurotransmitter. And that neurotransmitter is going to stimulate this neuron to carry an impulse down its axon. So neurotransmitters are chemicals that connect neurons, that allow two neurons to communicate with each other. Just like you, you know, when you put your finger um, near an opening of a plug, the electricity is not going to jump over the space to your finger. It can't even jump over this tiny little space um, between two neurons. So you have to convert that to chemical energy. And I think that's pretty much what that says. Here they talk a little bit about some different neurotransmitters. Um, you might have heard of, um, oh, that's it. That's not it. You may, might have heard of acetylcholine, norepinephrine, serotonin, things like that. So those are all chemicals that allow neurons to communicate with each other. And here we have, I have check your progress, and you're going to answer those questions. Okay.